SM Productions and the Jin Jin Radio Players present Count Dracula Goes Home for Christmas. It is nine o'clock in the evening, and Count Dracula and Countess Lily are having breakfast in their castle in the town of Dunruton. Master, I have the mile. Anything of interest, Bernard? Let's see. Uh, according to the local paper, the council is putting the bite on ratepayers, which is something that we no longer do, now that we are fruit bats. Um, a letter from Mother. They have invited us for Christmas. They are dying to meet you. Oh, how wonderful. Does this mean we are going to Transylvania? It certainly does, my dear. We must leave in three weeks' time to arrive before Christmas. I will get Igor to start the preparations. You rang, Master? Igor, we are going to Mother's for Christmas. Prepare the travelling coffins and begin packing anything that we might need. We leave in three weeks. I shall begin immediately, Master. What do you mean by travelling caskets, Bernard? Come with me, my dear, and I will show you. They leave the dining room and go down a winding staircase to the basement. On a pair of trestles are two caskets. They are made of aluminium. They have dents and scratches. You see, my dear, the airport handlers, they have may respect for the dead, but they have little for the caskets. That's why we travel in these, rather than our beautiful oak ones. Especially after what happened to poor Uncle Vlad. Oh dear, what happened? Oh, he was on his way to a suck it and see convention. When his casket fell off a forklift, it split open, and because it was broad daylight, he turned to dust. Luckily, someone swept him into a bucket, put the bucket in the casket, and then sent him home. And what becomes of us if that happens? Oh, a few drops of blood return him to form. But he did have a nasty gravel rash for a while. Now he refuses to leave the castle at all. Igor is at the post office to get travel documents for their trip to Transylvania. So, you want to take two dead people to Transylvania to be interned? Oh uh, no, they will be coming back. So you want to take two dead people on a tour of Europe? How dare you, the master and mistress of the undead. Here, I have made out the documents for you to leave the country. Any return you will have to do from there. travel bookings. We fly to Bucharest in Romania. Then I've hired a van. Igor will drive us north into Transylvania, past Brazov and into the mountains to your family's castle at Vladov. Very good my dear. I have arranged for Igor to have a gold credit card for any expenses. It's two weeks later and Igor arrives at the airport in the hearse. He drives to the customs area. A customs official in uniform approaches. Igor hands over the paperwork. So, you are Mr. Trevor Igor, and we have the bodies of the Count and Countess Dracula in the caskets. Open them up if you would, Mr. Igor. Just Igor, your honour. The caskets cannot be opened. Very well. I shall have them x-rayed. A short time later, the official returns to Igor and hands him some paperwork. Right. Everything appears in order. The airline will arrange the loading of the caskets. 
You may proceed to the departure lounge. They arrive in Bucharest. The caskets are loaded into a van and Igor sets off for Transylvania. They pass through the town of Vladov and travel up a snow-covered road to a castle that overlooks the town. It is dark when they arrive in the courtyard. Igor approaches the portico. Two steps lead up to a pair of large wooden doors. Off to one side is an illuminated Santa Claus. Igor presses it. The doors open to reveal a very tall elderly man dressed in coat and tails. You jingled. Ah, young Igor, we have been expecting you. I will have the servants bring in your master and mistress. They will be staying in the south wing. I have prepared a room for you in the servants' quarters. The dinner gong will sound for pre-dinner drinks in about one hour. Lily and Bernard make their way to the library. They enter. It is a large room with leather-bound books on floor-to-ceiling shelves. A dozen leather lounge chairs. A blazing fire burns in a large hearth. Two people turn to face them. The woman is short and dumpy with curly hair. The man is tall and regal with jet black hair and a white complexion. He is wearing evening dress. Lily, this is my mother, Countess Dracula, and my father, the Count. Call me Madge, dear. We are so pleased to meet you at last. Yes, my dear. It's a pleasure to welcome you into the family. I think this calls for a celebration. Arthur? Champagne, I think. Indeed, sir. I took the liberty of putting some bottles of Rothschild 63 on ice. So, Mother, who is going to be here for Christmas night? Oh, us and Uncle Vlad, of course, and your cousin Bruno. And seeing that it will be a full moon, Fido will probably drop in. You remember Fido? When you were small, you were inseparable. That was until the first time I saw him change into a werewolf. Sir, it's been over 25 years since I left. Have there been many changes? The main change was brought about by your mother after centuries of biting the peasants in the neck. With all the problems that brought, she decided that there must be a better way. So I formed a co-op where the villagers could sell their blood. It was then processed and put in cold storage. Then any of our kind could purchase it. You mean? Yes, that's right, my dear. We have a blood bank. After dinner, and Bernard and Lily are up on the castle battlements. A nearly full moon shines on the snow capped forests. Ah, that will be Uncle Fido. This will be interesting. I've never met a werewolf before. So they are part wolf and part human. How do they change? On a full moon night, they have no choice but. They learn to manipulate their morphic field so that they can change whenever they wish. Below them, the headlights of the car sweep through the village and heads up the road towards the castle. Moments later, a black Range Rover roars into the courtyard, sparks flying up from its studded tyres. It skids to a stop in front of the entrance. The driver gets out. 
He's wearing a black cap and a full-length black leather coat. Ah, Cousin Bruno, the playboy of the Riviera. It's been many years since I've seen him, and I see he has brought a friend. Come, let's meet them. They enter the library. Standing by the fire is a tall man with jet black hair. He's wearing a white shirt with ruffs down the front and at the cuffs. Alongside him is a tall blonde woman who is wearing a red mini skirt with a low neckline, revealing a lot of cleavage. Around her shoulders is a mink stole. Bernard, long time no see, old man. I say, where do you find that lovely creature? This lovely creature found me. Bruno, meet my wife, Lily. Lily, this is my cousin Bruno, and... I am Countessa della Rosa Valentino di Olive. But to my family and friends, I am Shirley. It is an honour to meet you, Lily and Bernard. Your Highness, dinner is ready to be served. If you would like to follow me... It's the following night, Christmas night, and everyone is in the main dining hall. There is a large fire burning in the hearth. They are seated around the huge dining table, which is laden with all sorts of food. Ice buckets hold bottles of champagne. They are all wearing funny hats. Fido has tinsel around his collar. You will notice that I have imported mangoes, bananas and pineapples and blood oranges for those of us who are fruit bats. I certainly appreciate that, Your Highness. I don't think that I could ever get into the neck biting thing. Thank you, my dear. We must indeed change with the times. So, Shirley, how long have you known our Bruno? We have been together for nearly two years now. Before Bruno gave me the third bite, I used to take sorts of drugs so that I could party all night. Now we go to Monte Carlo or Nice and I can dance and gamble all night long. So Bernard, I hear you've taken the pledge. Well I may be able to take you back. I have here a very fine bottle of AB negative. No thank you. I am enjoying a very nice blood orange from Gainda. All right, everyone, it's time to pull our crackers. This year, I had them made by the Acme Cracker Company, just for us. Come, Bruno, let us begin. And here is my joke. What is the difference between a lawyer and a vampire? A vampire only sucks blood at night. Here is mine. Why are vampire crumbs so close? Because blood is thicker than water. <laughs> Here we go, Lily. Come on, pull me cracker. Yay, you got it. Okay, let's see what it says. What do you call a vampire that went to the beach? Ash. And here is mine. What is a vampire's favourite cocktail? A Bloody Mary! <laughs> Igor, if you would be so kind. Oh, I say, this is very droll. What is a cross-dressing vampire called? Dragula. <laughs> <laughs> and the mind reads. What do you call a dumb vampire? A silly cloth. <laughs> oh, I'll turn the tape, babe. Cool. <laughs> what do you get when you cross a snowman with a vampire? Frostbite. Your turn, Shirley. Thanks, babe. Let's 
C. What fast food do vampires crave the most? Joggers. Merry Christmas. And so, yes, we'll do it all. So, from S&M Productions, Productions and the Ginger Radio Players, we wish you all a happy and safe Christmas and a great new year. Happy New Year. Dracula Goes Home for Christmas was written by M. D. Stansby, starred Charlie as Bernard, Sharon as Lily, Sam as Igor, Tom as Bruno, Tony and as Tim. officials, Barb as Madge, David as the Count, Mary as Shirley, Clarkie as Arthur, the narrator was Heather. Copyright December 2022.